<laughs> well, glory. Some of you have been gone for a while. You've been sick, but you're back, and we're glad to have you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, when I woke up this morning at 4 o'clock, uh, a, the song, He Leadeth Me, was, was just playing over and over and over in my head. And that got me thinking about the shepherd. How many of you know you drive cattle? You drive cattle. You don't drive sheep. You don't drive sheep. You lead sheep. The shepherds, especially uh, in, in the eastern part of our world, Israel and, and those places like that, they name every one of their sheep. They know every one of their sheep by, the, by name and they call them and they come. Hello. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. How many of you come when He calls you? Go ahead, one more time. Alright, there you go. Father, I need Your help this morning like never before. The only reason I need Your help more today than I did last Sunday is because it's been seven days later and I need it all over again. Father God, I pray that your anointing would fall in this place. I pray, God, that your, your anointing would, would set upon your people today to receive your word. Not because the pastor said it, not because some preacher said some stuff, but because your word has spoken some things today. Your Holy Spirit, I just ask, would, would, would speak through me today. God, I, I need your anointing. I need your touch. God, let this word go forth the way you intended for it to go forth, God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There's a psalm in the Old Testament that is familiar to the church that Probably most of you, with the moment I said psalm, you probably in your mind already went there. And in the 23rd psalm, David wrote this, and this is what he said, and if you want to stand with me while I read this, that would be honoring to the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. How many of you know that He'll supply all of your needs? It might not look like it in your moment. There have been many times in my life when I didn't feel like I was getting my needs met, but I'm still here, so apparently I did. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Anybody need a little soul restoration today? He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow, it's a shadow, church. The shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You prepare a, a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Can you imagine just here? Here's a, all, all your all the naysayers, all them people that are coming against you. And the Lord said, "Listen, I want you to just come over here and just sit down right here at this table." I mean, he going to throw down a big old. Mm, mm, mm. That's confirmation. That's exactly what I was thinking in my mind. Pot roast. <laughs> you know, with, with potatoes that have been cooked in there with it. And so then potatoes have taken on that flavor. Oh, oh glory. And, 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 and some onions and some carrots thrown in there, just, you know, and some pepperoncinis on top of that. Oh, glory to Jesus. Nobody's leaving. Here, I want you to just sit down here because everything is so peaceful. Even in the presence of your... I just want you to just sit down and just enjoy this meal. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And you're going, and you can't have none. <laughs> you anoint my head with oil. Do you know... Do you, I told him not to leave. He just run off. Lord. Can you not control that man? He left the potatoes, didn't he? Glory to God. Listen, listen. It says you anoint my head with oil. And when y'all come up here for prayer, do you know that we don't anoint correctly? We don't anoint bi the biblical way. I've been anointed like that one time. It was the craziest moment I've ever had in my life. And a young man called me to the, it was, I was the pastor, but I let him share that day. And, and he was talking about anointing and he got me up there and he dumped a bottle of oil on my head. Which is exactly how they did it. And it just run all down my face, and I was bawling, and I was a mess. We just, whoosh, little dab will do you. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Listen, your cup ain't just full. It runs over. Short, listen, if, if the Bible... If the Bible has sheepdogs, they're right here. Goodness and mercy. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you have promised us all of this, Lord. And I pray today that somehow what's inside of me will come out of my mouth and get on your people today. God, that we will leave this place knowing that we have a shepherd and that he cares for me. He supplies all my needs. He leads me in good places. He brings me beside still waters and sweet springs, Father God. And there's a table prepared and laid out before us, Lord. The Lord God, I, that, that, that will bring us nourishment and health and wholeness, God. And it's all found at your table. God, I love you today. And I pray that your people receive this word in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated. Listen, life is not an easy journey. Life is not an easy journey. Listen, we get phone calls. Amen. We get phone calls that we're not expecting. They shake us. They rattle us. They, they throw us off, 
off course. Life is not an easy journey. The road is not always smooth. The conditions are not always favorable. And there are many hazards that lie along the way. When, while all of this is happening, life contains many joys. Life can also be plagued by many sorrows. Anybody experience any of that? Life can be confusing. Hello. Even at times, life can be terrifying. Anybody ever been terrified before? Furthermore, our needs for the journey are never ending, and oftentimes we feel helpless and overwhelmed. Anybody ever felt overwhelmed in their life? Clearly, clearly, we are not created to navigate life alone. Do you understand that the, the, the Bible says, calls us sheep? Sheep need a shepherd. Do you know that if you just put sheep out in the field and leave them alone, they're going to get in trouble. They are going to run amok. They're going to get into all kinds of mess. If one sheep does it, they'll all do it. One of my favorite sheep illustrations That, that illustrates vividly how stupid sheep are. Has anybody in this, let me just, let me just, let's just get this out in the open right now. Has anybody ever done something just because somebody else did it? Put your hand up, Mike. No, this is... Anybody over here ever do something just because somebody else did it? Anybody in the back room? Over here? Anybody over here? This is going to clear things up for you. That we're sheep or stupid. If you've ever been to Highway 97 up over the top of the hill and dropped down to Highway 97 up over... Uh, Diamond Lake and Crater Lake and that long straight stretch. 18 miles. Spring Creek Hill. Following a cattle truck that turned out was a sheep truck. How many of you have ever seen one of them? They got a door about that wide. Pull on the rope on the inside. The door goes up. Cows come out. The door starts shaking. The door starts going up. And there's a sheep looking out the door. <laughs> Looks good out there. <laughs> Driving down the road. <laughs> 55. He probably wasn't doing 55 because it's over there sheep said I wonder what that wonder what that sagebrush tastes like and so he just jumps out and right behind him was another one he said well old Wilbur did it and so he jumped out and then another one jumped out, and another one, and there's sheep flying everywhere. This is a true story. Before this truck driver finally looked in his mirror and saw half his load scattered out on the highway. 
Now, we laugh at that because it wasn't our sheep and it didn't cost us anything other than the, 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 the benefit of the illustration this morning that we all, we, we're, we're likened to them. How many of you that raised your hand were like, I did the same daggum thing when I followed somebody that did something that I knew better than to do? Professor and author Haddon Robinson says this of David. He says, David was a mature man. He was filled with his share of conflicting passions and confusing problems that confront any human being. He says, not only was he the heroic slayer of Goliath, the devoted friend to Jonathan, a lover of music, and an able king, he was also a haggard fugitive. He was in fact an adulterer. He was also a murderer. As a father, we don't talk about this a lot, but it's coming up this morning. As a father, he watched his baby die. He wept when his ungrateful son, Absalom, was slain and led an armed rebellion against his father. You ever had your kids turn on you? That's a level of pain that not many, thank God, have to endure. David has not left us with only beautiful thoughts, but with the honest testimony about God that learned while living life to the hilt. Later on in his years, David's mind traveled back to his younger days when he tended his father's sheep. He might not have liked it all that much, tending sheep. If you've ever been around sheep, they stink. They, they're, they're a pain. You've got to constantly work on them. You've got to doctor them. You've got to take care of them. All this stuff. You buy a herd of cows, Jack, just build a fence and put them out there in it. Everything's great. Kind of. <laughs> right, right, Chuck, or, or uh, not Chuck, Gary. Boy, I do have a hard time with names, don't I? I should just refer to Hey You. I'd be safe. That's probably why back in the old days they called everybody brother and sister. You couldn't screw that up. I probably could. I probably could. David maybe had visions of sitting in a grassy meadow somewhere, leaned up against a rock, talking to his sheep, singing to his sheep. Pull out his sling and do a little target practice. He probably thought about those days as he tended his father's sheep there before David was ever known in Jerusalem the Lord begins to give him a living illustration of his abundant care for his people and now at an old age after Goliath after Saul after Bathsheba Uriah Amnon and Absalom David reflected on his life and more fully understood something of the depth of the Lord's care Listen, you might feel like the Lord has abandoned you in some way. Can I just tell you something? He didn't. He hasn't, and he won't. He said in his word, I will never leave you. I will not forsake you. He walked many times through the valley of the shadow of death, but now... It appeared to be close at hand. He knew that he couldn't escape as he had before. He faced his approaching death with courage, knowing he would dwell in God's house forever. Amen? Jehovah, who had shepherded him through all the storms of life, would, would guide him safely through death's valley and into his own glorious presence. Listen, I don't know what you're going through, but I know this. 
You ain't going through it alone. You're not going through it alone. One day, like David, you and I will dwell in God's house forever. You ever picture what that's going to be like? It probably ain't going to be like that. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have pictured it old growth timber everywhere. Deer and elk everywhere. Probably not going to be like that. Might be like that, but it might not be like that. But whatever it is, we're going to like it a lot. Woo! We're going to like it. <laughs> Jehovah shepherded him. Now, you've got to think about this for a minute. Because to be shepherded means that you had to submit to the shepherd. There used to be an old guy that lived here. Maybe some of you will know his name, but his name was Brother Hadley. Anybody, anybody know Brother Hadley? Tom, I know you do, and you guys do. Had some sheep. And I remember at the Assembly of God in Myrtle Creek one fine Sunday morning in Sunday school, Brother Hadley was talking about sheep. And he said, you know how, you know how the old-time shepherds used to deal with with a sheep that was unruly? You just go get the little fella and you just break his leg. <clears throat> you just break his little leg. And then you grab the little lamb after he's done jumping around because he done broke his leg and you Fix it all up, and you splint it or whatever you got to do, wrap the thing all up, and then he carries that sheep, that little lamb, around with him until he's completely healed. And when you put that little lamb back in the flock, his whole attitude's changed. You know why? Because he spent time with the shepherd. He spent some time. He realized that that shepherd has his very best interests in mind. That shepherd nurtured him and cared for him. Yes, he inflicted pain, but he also put on the, ba the, 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 the salve and the balm and wrapped it all up and cared for him and dr give him drink and give him food to eat. And the sheep became familiar with him. The sheep understood who he was and what his job was. And you know, this guy really got my best interest in mind maybe I ought to quit running amok Jehovah had shepherded him through the storms of life the same shepherd would guide him and will guide us safely through death's valley and into his own glorious presence in the New Testament, it talks about Jesus in, as three shepherds. In John chapter 10, verse 11, the Bible says that Jesus is the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. How many of you know that if a mountain lion is coming for one of my sheep, hello, the fight's on. The difference is I'm armed different than David was. Amen? <laughs> but David was a master marksman with a sling. I'm not talking about a wrist rocket. Do you know what a shepherd's sling is? My dad made me one. And if I was standing inside the barn, I could hit the barn. <laughs> so 
Some of you are starting to catch on what I just said. But it was a leather, had two leather strings on it and, and a pouch. And you would put the rock in the pouch and you would spin it. And one part you would have wrapped around your fingers. And the other part you would just have between your thumb and your forefinger. And you'd spin that thing around and f- turn it loose. And buddy, you could chuck a rock from here to breakfast. I mean, but David could knock a gnat off a camel's back. He could hit a giant. Giant's pretty easy to hit, but David did all right. (laughs) When a lion and a bear came after his flock. Now, you got to picture this. This is why David's one of my heroes in the Bible. And David is a representation of the Savior that we have that is our shepherd. This verse of Scripture says that he's the good shepherd. But when a bear came, the Bible said that David grabbed him right by the face. He grabbed him a handful of beard and punched him out. Go read about it. First Samuel. Go read about it. He punched his lights out. He beat up a bear. Our men's group is studying about uh, a guy that chased a lion into a pit on a snowy day and killed it. There were some tough dudes back in them days, you know. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Not only is he the good shepherd according to John 10 and verse 11, according to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20 and 21, the Bible calls him, he, he's upgraded. Anybody ever, we got upgraded, our car got upgraded from economy to luxury. Jesus is in the scripture, he's getting upgraded from good shepherd, now he's the great shepherd. Now the God of peace, according to Hebrews 13, 20, and 21. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Can I tell you something? The covenant relationship that Jesus established a new and a better covenant in His blood. It's an everlasting covenant. You don't have to renew it every year. Through the blood of the everlasting... By the way, do you realize that you can't establish a covenant without blood? If blood's not involved in a covenant, it's a contract. Hello. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect or mature is literally the word, in every good work to do His will, working in you by the Holy Spirit, which that which is well-pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you realize that, that He lives inside of you? He's doing a work inside of you. The wellspring is, is, is inside of you. If you'll just allow Him to be activated in your life, to whom glory be forever and ever. Amen. And so He's a good shepherd in John 10. He is the great shepherd in, in, in Hebrews 11, uh, 13 and 20 and 21 but listen the upgrades just keep getting better amen because he's gone from good shepherd good shepherd to great shepherd now according to first peter chapter 5 and verse 4 he is now referred to as the chief shepherd and when the chief shepherd shall appear Wonder when that's talking about. Hello. When the horn blows. When, when, when Jesus steps out. When Jesus steps out. To call his people home. It's a song, but I'll leave that to the singers. I 
I'm telling you. When the chief shepherd shall appear on a cloud to call us home, ye shall, who's ye? Ye be ye. Ha <laughs> ha. Ye be ye, ye shall receive, not maybe, not might, not if it's a good day, not whatever based on what you did, uh, other than accept him. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Woo! Isn't that good? You an Old Testament person? Good. Let me tell you what it says in the Old Testament about this shepherd. In Psalm chapter 22, Christ is presented as the good shepherd who dies for his sheep. Through Christ's sacrificial death, he has tended to our past. I want you to think about this. I, 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 I want you to think about that he tended to your past. I do dishes every once in a while. What'd she say? Listen. I help make the mess, I can help clean it up. Like once a month or something. (laughs) She'll take what she can get. Here's what I know about doing dishes. You ever eat anything and, 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 and there's still stuff on your plate? I got two of them. Yeah. All that mess. Sometimes sometimes she'll be done cooking and she'll just put whatever didn't get eat in the sink. You know why? Because we have a garbage disposal. And about a month ago I had to tear all the pipes out from underneath our kitchen sink. Because we have a garbage disposal. Can I just tell you that garbage disposals are meant for incidental kind of things? You know, stuff that just happens to fall in there. It's not for putting leftovers in. It ain't for cleaning up everybody's mess and putting it in there. It's gr- it, the water still goes down until it don't. She said, just do the dishes. (laughs) I fixed it. I fixed it, and I know it works, but here's the thing. When, when all of that mess goes down through the garbage disposal and you flick the switch and you run the water and eh, it grinds all that stuff up, unless it's a spoon, it won't eat a spoon, but it'll sure make a mess. It's gone. Do you know that? Everything that goes down that drain is gone. You ain't never going to see that again unless, of course, you have to clean out the pipes. Which end very often. And when the Lord Jesus applies his blood, when he tends to our past, all of our sins and all of our transgressions are washed away. You don't see them anymore. They are gone, out of here, washed by the blood of the Lamb. It is, it, it, this is what is symbolized by the cross in Psalm 22. Do you know that Psalm 23 presents Christ as the great shepherd who lives for his sheep. Can I tell you that he he not only lived for us, he died for us. 
Through His resurrection and endless life, He, in fact, makes intercession for you and I and supplies our present needs. He is this morning at the right hand of God praying for you and I. Praying for your child that is out there running amok. It's symbolized by the crook. I, should have, I have a shepherd's staff at home, a real live shepherd's staff with the crook and the whole deal. I, I have that. It's symbolized by the crook in verse 4 of chapter 23, your rod and your staff. And 24, Psalm 24, you know what Psalm 24 talks about? Psalm 24 presents Christ as the the chief shepherd. I showed you in the New Testament, the good shepherd, great shepherd, and chief shepherd. I'm showing you here in the Old Testament, Psalm 22, 23, and 24. The good shepherd, the great shepherd, and the chief shepherd. And in 24, he represents Christ as the chief shepherd who's coming back for his sheep. Woo! That is one flock I don't mind being a part of. Amen? As He returns, He is going to transport us into His presence where we will reign with Him throughout the future, throughout eternity. And it is symbolized by the crown. He is the King. And in, our, in children's church, when you do O, O, He is the King. Well, I was working on them, though. I was trying. And Jesus is Jesus. 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 Right, Glenn? Is that right? Jesus. Jesus. You guys are good. Christ, listen, if you don't know this, your knower is about to get enhanced. Christ meets every need in your life. Listen, He feeds us and leads us throughout our journey. He loves us and He cares for us. We are His sheep. Therefore, we are able to rest easy and secure in Him. Listen, You know what meerkats are? Aren't they cute? They ain't got a shepherd. They have a watchman. They have one little meerkat. I don't know how I don't know if it's the luck of the draw or he pulled the short straw. I don't know how it works. But they got this one meerkat and he stands out there and he's watching all the time. And he's listening all the time. And he's looking through the 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 brush and all and looking in the air because they got them great big old birds that fly around over there. And if one of them's a little slow getting to the hole, uh, he gone. And that little dude, when he blows the alarm, uh, them little dudes are gone. A sheep would be like, "What, what? What? What'd he say? Do you think he really meant that? I don't see nothing. They don't wait to check out what the watchman said. The watchman blows the alarm. Them dudes are gone. He cares for us. We can rest easy. As long as that watchman and them meerkats is on point and is on the job, all the rest of them, they're scurrying, little babies, they're fighting and playing, everybody's having a great time. Blow the alarm. It is on like Donkey Kong. I mean, they are... We are able to rest easy even in the midst of an evil and a perverse world. We are able to rest easy and secure in Him. Anybody ever blown it like this week or yesterday? 
My salvation is an eternal salvation. I keep repenting over... Well, pastor, how can you keep repenting? Because I keep blowing it. There's still about 220-something pounds of flesh here that keeps getting in the way. This is the glorious message of this 23rd Psalm. As the Lord is the good shepherd, so we are his sheep. We do not have to be frightened. We don't have to be passive little animals, but obedient followers, wise enough to follow the one who will lead us in the right places, in the right ways. Listen, don't be questioning the leading and the direction of the Lord. Just be obedient and go where he says to go. Looks scary. Well, remember, the shepherd is watching you. The shepherd is leading you. The shepherd's going to go before you. We, when we allow uh, God, our good shepherd, to guide us, we can have contentment. Contentment. When we choose to sin, however, and go our own way, don't go blaming God for the environment that we create for ourselves. My dad used to say of his life, at the end of his life, and I was desperately trying to get my dad saved. And he'd say, well, son, these are the cards I've been dealt I'll just play my hand. I said, Dad, the problem is with your thinking is you don't realize that you have an ace in the hole. And his name is Jesus. Well, this is the train I'm on. I'm just going to ride her to the end of the tracks. That sounds macho and all that, but here's the deal. Switch tracks. There's a switch on train. Listen, tr you don't turn a train around like you do a car or a truck. You don't say, oh, detour. No, that don't work that way. If the tracks are messed up, you're going to crash. Unless, unless they've radioed ahead and, and the guy gets out there and he takes the lock off. You know why they lock them? Because guys like us, <laughs> we, <laughs> because there are people like me and some of my buddies that back in the day might have, just to see what would happen. But somewhere down the road, that guy unlocks the lock and switches the track and puts the train on another track. Jesus has changed. He's the switchman. He can switch the tracks and get us on a, the glory train to heaven. Don't, don't blame God for the environment that we create ourselves Search for God and let Him change the environment. Our shepherd knows the green meadows. He knows the peaceful streams that will restore us. We will reach these places only by following Him obediently. I want to go back, look at the New Testament verses again quickly in closing. In closing, 1 John 10 and verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. See, Jesus is in fact the devoted shepherd, the dedicated shepherd. He's the good shepherd. And there are four characteristics that set this good shepherd apart from false or evil shepherds. Number one, he approaches directly. You ever notice that Jesus doesn't beat around the bush? He just calls sin, sin. He said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. He approaches directly. He enters at the gate. 
He doesn't climb in over the wall. He doesn't do this or that. And number two, he has God's authority. He has God's authority. The gatekeeper allows him to enter. Why? Because he's recognized. He walks with and walks in a position of authority that was given him by his father. Number three, he meets real needs. There's no greater need than to have sin erased and eradicated from your life and mine. He meets real needs. The sheep recognize his voice and follow him. Do you know that I believe even the unsaved know his voice and it's what turns them away? They just can't stand it. I don't need no help. Yes, you do. You don't need no help to go to hell, but you need help to get to heaven. So he approaches directly. He has God's authority. He meets real needs. The sheep recognize his voice. They follow him. And this is number four. He has sacrificial love. Christ willingly laid down his life for the life of his sheep, for you and for me. That's the good shepherd. The great shepherd in verses 20 and 21 of Hebrews chapter 13, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you uh, that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead is central, is the central fact of Christian history. I'm going to steal your stuff, Bob. We were talking about this up on the, on the hill the other day. You know the Bible says that when one person gets saved, the angels rejoice. Isn't that good? What happened the day Jesus rose from the grave and went and reclaimed his seat beside the Father? What did they do that day? I'm telling you. You just let that, I mean, I can't show you in Scripture, I can't bring it out in Scripture, but you've got to think about it. I mean, that's the, he, he's the son of the Most High God. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from me and you when we get saved, but this was Jesus. Yeah. Whoo! Let that just rattle around in your brain for a minute. Thank you, Bob. I'll steal anything. Here he is called the great shepherd of the sheep, and Christ laid down his life for his sheep. Now the new and everlasting covenant had been signed with his blood. The new and everlasting covenant had been signed with his blood. These verses include two significant results of the death of Christ and his resurrection. Number one, God works in us to make us the kind of people who will please him. Can I just tell you something? Somebody in this place just now thought, well, that sounds like a lot of work. How in the world am I ever going to please a holy and a righteous God I'm just a guy I'm just a gal I'm just a sheep well how how can I do listen it's not burdensome when you're loving on your wife or loving on your kids and doing special things for them how burdensome is that It's the same way with the Lord. When you just love on Him and be a blessing to Him, that's all He's asking. That that pleases Him. Let God change you from within and then use you to help others. 
Number two, he equips us to do the kinds of things that will please him. Let him change you. He's the chief shepherd. And when the chief shepherd, 1 Peter 5 and 4, when the chief shepherd, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Whoa. Whoa. The great shepherd again is Jesus and it refers to his second coming when he will judge all people and give rewards to his faithful followers. That's going to be a reward that we will soon get rid of. <laughs> we'll just throw him back at his feet. See, the crown, while it's a metaphorical crown, it pictures the glory that you and I as believers will receive that is eternal and it is unchanging. Listen, the battle that you and I fight today to keep our flesh in check, we won't have that battle in glory. There will be no sin. There will be peace evermore. Amen? What better motivation for selfless service? Man, find somebody and be a blessing to them. What better motivation for keeping the faith in the face of suffering and temptation? And I close with this. Suffer well. Suffer well. It might be causing you pain. You might be suffering emotionally. You might be suffering physically. But let me tell you something. Keep your eye on Jesus. Keep your motivation toward heaven keep your heart right and pure before god and it will be worth it all when we see jesus amen amen, amen. father all the glory goes to you god we love you god we worship you and we praise you lord god i pray that you would be the good the great and the chief shepherd in every one of our lives in this place today, whether in this house or whether watching again today by way of the internet. God, I pray that you would begin to gather your sheep. God, bring them into the catch pen, this place we call the church. Father, we are grateful. We are so grateful that you have called us by name. That your pen is big enough for us that your love is deep enough for us that your blood is great enough to wash us Lord I pray this morning with heads bowed and eyes closed people praying in this house that God if there would be one in this place today God that does not know you as Lord and Savior Never asked Jesus into their heart before. But because they decided this morning to be under the care, the watchful eye of the great chief shepherd, that today they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. They would quit running around. That they'd quit following after uh, sheep that have gone astray. Father, I pray right now your Holy Spirit would begin to work in the hearts and the lives of your people. If you're in this room today with heads bowed and eyes closed, people praying all across this sanctuary if you're here today. You say, Preacher, I never have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but today, today is my day. Today I'm listening to the invitation to become a sheep in His pasture. And if that's you today, I ask you to just slip your hand up and say, Preacher, that's me. I need Jesus in my life. Never accepted Him before, but today's my day. Today's my day. Today's my day. Anybody watching by way of the internet, just leave us a note there on the, on the computer and we'll get to you. Maybe this morning, maybe this morning you 
have a need in your body. The Bible says, if you have a need, come to the church. Ask to be prayed for and anointed. Through the laying on of hands and the anointing of oil, you shall receive. So this morning, as we close, if that's you, you need a touch in your body. You have a need, physical, financial, spiritual. It doesn't matter if you have a need. I'm going to ask you to come to this altar. We will anoint you with oil. We will believe and pray the prayer of faith with you. We'll ask God to have his way in your life. You can get up and come right now while I close this service. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray. Everything I said was directed of you. Used God to bring illustration or clarity to your word. Father God, that you would seal this word in our heart, that we would realize and recognize that we have a great shepherd, that his name is Jesus, and that one of these days, He's going to step out on that cloud. And he's going to call his people home. Lord, we want to be in that number. We want to be in that number. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. God go with you. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you back here tonight. Six o'clock.